guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've been keeping up with me on Instagram, you know that I've been trying a lot of instruments, largely because so many of the students in my studio are looking to purchase new instruments or new to them instruments. So many of you have been asking about what I look for when trying a bassoon that I've decided to create a guide to buying a bassoon. Making sure that I have a great quality read that matches the instrument and the vocal is of key importance. I know that when I try heckle bassoons, oftentimes if it's an earlier number of a heckle bassoon, I will use shorter reads. Whereas if I'm trying a Fox or Renard or a Puchner or a Moosman, I will actually use longer reads. So do be sure as you try this that you match the read to the bassoon so that your testing is accurate. My first key tip or trick for purchasing a bassoon is to try the instrument. Now it's great to go with a brand name that has a reputation for being a good instrument, but it's important to note that I've tried a lot of really good brand name instruments and I've also tried a lot of really bad brand name instruments. For instance, when I purchased my heckle bassoon, I tried about 15 or 20 heckles before I found an instrument that had a sound and a chord to it and an even scale that matched exactly what I was looking for. If you missed my purchasing and repairing my heckle bassoon video, I will link it so you can get a better idea of what I went through purchasing my heckle. It's also important to note that before I bought my Puchner bassoon, I tried nine instruments of the same vintage and the same model before I decided on an instrument that suited me and my needs. This is because every tree that grows is ever so slightly different and unique. This means that every bassoon that is made out of each tree is going to be ever so slightly different. So try before you buy. I also suggest that you have a trained professional, someone you trust, either a teacher or a professional instrumentalist who plays your instrument, try it out because they'll have a skill set that ensures that you'll have an instrument that you can grow into. By having a bassoonist who is removed from the sale, someone who will not make any money on the sale or will not lose anything on the sale, you get an honest evaluation over whether or not that person believes that the financial value of the instrument and the sale is worth purchasing. My second key tip and trick for you is to make sure that you are working with a company or a seller that has a reputation. When I mention companies, there are companies such as Forest Double Reed, Miller Marketing, Midwest Musical Imports, Woodwind Brasswind, Charles Double Reed. These are just companies I'm naming off the top of my head that specialize in double reed instrument sales. They have both new and used instruments. The instruments um, are tried prior to being set out to market and they are looking to keep their reputation up. So they're not going to market an instrument that they do not feel is worth the value. These are also companies that have had experience working with sales and can help with how to best set up the sale for success. When working with individual sellers, it's important to make sure that you have the instrument evaluated by someone other than yourself. This is why I mentioned in my first key tip and trick to make sure that you have a teacher or a professional bassoonist try the instrument prior to purchasing so that you get an outside perspective. Also, it's important that you have a background on the person who's selling the instrument. That way you know that when you give them money to try the instrument that you will then get the instrument. So there's no confusion over you gave them money and no instrument actually arrived. So always be sure that you have a bit of a background on the person who is selling the instrument, whether that's a reputation through your teacher who is helping you find the seller or by you knowing the seller personally and having a relationship with them. It's risky business to go into buying such a large financial obligation without a backup. So always know your seller. When I try an instrument, I look for three key elements. The first of these is response. I make sure that the instrument has clear articulation, a front of the note as well as an ease to the end of the note. 
I try this at a piano dynamic as well as a forte dynamic with different articulations such as an accent as well as a staccato just to see how the basic articulation of the instrument responds. I will also check the response in the tenor register of the bassoon making sure that the notes have the same ease as the mid register. This is true as well of the low register notes. I love to also check the response of the notes that would typically be vented. The A, the B flat, the B natural, the C, and even sometimes the D. I like to go about this by starting out without venting at all and also not holding the whisper key down. I like to see if the notes have potential to crack. Then I test the notes with flicking and then I test the notes with full venting. Sometimes a vocal can ever so slightly adjust whether or not an, an instrument does need to have any venting done, but I want to make sure that the bones of the instrument are solid so that a vocal can be more of an accessory instead of a fix for a problem that is in the actual bore of the instrument. The second key element that I look for when I'm testing an instrument is intonation and stability. I want to make sure that the scale is even. When I'm checking the evenness of the scale, I'm making sure that there aren't any notes that feel unstable, that I blow the air and it feels like I can't quite find the center of the pitch and I ride either flat or sharp as a result. I'm also careful to make sure that I don't have any notes that happen to stick out. When I mean they stick out, they stick out with an accent or an intonation that is uneven or a tone color that just doesn't quite match the notes around it. The third key element that I look for when I'm trying a bassoon are the tone colors. Does it have a richness and a depth to the sound? I know that I've tried some bassoons that only have one color palette, that they've just been all in shades of red. I have tried bassoons that have only primary colors, and I have tried instruments that have a full spectrum of colors, all of the colors in the prism. As I'm looking for the tone colors, I want to make sure that it's flexible. Flexible enough to give me some of those bright tone colors, but flexible enough that it can also give me some of those richer dark tone colors as well. This gives me a variety of a palette to play with. Now as I am trying instruments for my students, there's a separate portion that I do when I'm looking to try an instrument for them. I want to make sure that the instrument meets their needs. That it not only meets their needs, but it's an instrument that they can grow into for their desired career path. Not all bassoonists need a professional model bassoon. And not all bassoonists need a plastic bassoon. It's finding a bassoon that matches the desires and the artistry of each student so that they can develop to their fullest potential. Okay guys, I hope you found this helpful in finding an instrument that matches your artistic goals. There's one out there for everyone and every bassoon is ever so slightly different. If you want to make sure that you keep up on the instruments that I'm trying as well as the events that are happening on my read desk, and even events at JSU, be sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any future videos, be sure to click that subscribe button. I will see you guys next time. Bye! That means that you're not going to have any response on the notes that these keys use. So, having a bassoon stand is key largely because it can hold your bassoon up and you don't have to stick your bassoon in a corner. I have a great meme of that I'll insert now of like old school people putting their bassoon in quarters. These trumpets are so loud. <laughs>